Are we ready? Okay, good morning. Good afternoon, actually, and welcome to the Committee on Finance and Revenue's Budget Markup. The committee has oversight authority for the Washington Convention and Sports Authority Destination D.C., Commission on Arts and Humanities, the Board of Real Property Assessments and Appeals, and D.C. Lottery and Charitable Games Control Board, and the Office of the Chief Financial Officer, which includes the Office of the Treasury, the Office of Tax and Revenue, the Office of Financial Operations and Systems, and the Office of Revenue Analysis. We also have the jurisdiction over tax proposals and other financial matters. So the time is now 12.15 p.m., and I recognize the presence of a quorum uh, of all of my colleagues who are members of the committee, starting on my right, Council Member Bowser, Council Member Barry, Council Member Catania, and Council Member Grasso. Members should have received on the dais a copy of our draft report and the BSA attachment with some updates uh, that I will address. So let me go through all of this, and then we'll open up the floor to questions, comments, and or amendments that anybody might have. So we'll start with the Office of the Chief Financial Officer, Fiscal Year 2015 Operating Budget Recommendations. The committee recommends approval of the FY 2015 budget request of the Office of the Chief Financial Officer in the amount of $166,497,000 $1,577. This reflects no change in the mayor's budget request and an increase in overall budget from FY 2014 of 19.8 percent. For fiscal year 2015 FY 2020 capital budget recommendations, the committee recommends approval of the OCFO's capital budget as proposed by the mayor with a reduction of 433000 hmm? No, no. Oh, that's not in there? Okay. Then we recommend uh, approval of the OCFO's capital budget as proposed by the mayor. Um, number two, the D.C. Lottery and Charitable Games Control Board. Fiscal year 2015 operating budget recommendations. The committee recommends approval of the FY 2015 budget request of the D.C. DC Lottery and Charitable Games Control Board in the amount of $242,156,316 million. This reflects no change in the mayor's budget request and a decrease of 4.3 percent of the FY 2014 approved budget, all of which are enterprise and other funds. Number three is the Real Property Tax Appeals Commission, FY 2015 operating budget recommendations. The committee recommends approval of the FY 2015 budget request of the commission in the amount of $1,749,390, reflecting no change in the mayor's budget request. The office number four, the Office of Finance and Resource Management. The committee recommends approval of the FY 2015 budget request of the office in the amount of $35,347,530, which again reflects no change in the mayor's budget request. The uh, Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Commission, committee recommends approval of the FY 2015 budget request of the Commission in the amount of $16,460,085 as proposed by the Mayor. Committee further recommends that the Committee of the Whole, when we take all of this to the Committee of the Whole, identify an additional $4 million in funding for 2015, which we bring the total to $20 million, which is the amount that we believe and I believe everyone in the Council believes the Commission on Arts and Humanities should have to operate. This would be in conformity with what the Council passed last year when it set up a dedicated funding source using the sales tax that would generate somewhere between 20 and $25 million a year. And in addition, the committee recommends reinstating that dedicated tax to fund the Commission going forward. Uh, the Mayor, in his budget, repealed the tax that the Council had put in place, the dedicated funding source that the Council had put in place to fund the Arts Commission uh, beginning in 2018 uh, with approximately 20 to $25 million. So we recommend that be reinstated. Okay, um, capital side, the committee is concerned by the recent decision that public arts projects are not eligible for capital dollars going forward and has referred this matter to the Chief Financial Officer for further consideration. Number six, Events DC and the Washington Convention and Sports Authority. Committee recommends approval of the FY 2015 budget 
uh, request of the Washington Convention and Sports Authority in the amount of $132,792,837, which reflects no change in the mayor's uh, budget request. Uh, number seven is Destination DC, which is the marketing arm of our government. The committee recommends approval of the FY 2015 budget supplement of Destination DC in the amount of $3 million. This amount is mandated to be indexed to inflation, but it does not appear that this was done in the current budget proposal, uh, although the law states it should be. The committee recommends that this number be indexed to inflation beginning in 2015. Further, the committee makes the unfunded recommendation again to the Committee of the Whole when we do the uh, final budget to increase the amount going to Destination DC from the $3 million to $10 million per year. Uh, Destination DC again is the marketing arm of the uh, District of Columbia bringing tourists to our uh, city. They have done uh, an excellent job with the $3 million they have. Even at $10 million, it's a fraction of the amount that many other cities, including Boston, Charlotte, New York City, uh, other places, Las Vegas, spend uh, marketing their city. So we would like to give them additional funds uh, and uh, then have a report back showing that using those funds was able to uh, increase our tourism. So that's a recommendation that is made. Uh, number eight, we don't need that. Okay. I'm recommending, right, the budget now has $3 million. I'm recommending an additional $7 million. But it could be any amount, but that's what uh, I'm recommending. I support that. Yep, okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, number eight is a uh, transfer of $150,000 from the OCFO Tax Administration to the Committee on Economic Development with regard to the Earned Income Tax Credit Education Ini Initiative. Every year, the Earned Income Tax Credit, which the District of Columbia has a great program, uh, we um, have an education program, costs about $150,000, and for some reason it never gets funded, So, uh, even though we ask it to be funded. So every year we do fund it, and uh, the, the issue we run into on a serious note is that there are people in the city who don't know that they can take advantage of this program, and it's probably one of the best programs to help people uh, who are uh, uh, who are uh, struggling in our city, so um, so we recommend that uh, transfer. Um, and then finally, uh, at our recent uh, budget hearing, I had talked extensively of my views of the budget, both relating to initiatives proposed by the mayor, and, and I support as well other items uh, that should be included. Uh, so with that, uh, I move the committee report and accompanying budget request act and Budget Support Act recommendations would leave for the staff to make technical and conforming changes and leave for the staff to make additional minor changes in order to enable certification. So I'd like to move all of that at this time and now open up the floor Mr. to Chairman. any discussion. Yes, Council Member Barry. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman, and to commend you for your outstanding leadership for this committee. It's a pleasure to work on this committee. I can't say that about all committees down here, but I can say it about this one in terms of your willing to listen to other points of view, et cetera. And, and I'm in a, a bind in the sense that my chief of staff has been out for three months on uh, sick and annual leave because of her husband being very ill. And I'm short staffed it. And so Shantae has been working on a lot of other stuff. So I'd like to get, we talked about it briefly, yep. like to verbally make several amendments and then put them in writing uh, this afternoon when we have a chance to. Can we do that? Uh, let me ask you to report language. What? Maybe to report language. Maybe to report language? What, do, what is your sense on that? <laughs> Just so we do it properly and Mr. Barry is able to make his amendments. It has no physical impact, none of it. I think the best course of action would be to talk uh, to what would be in the language so it's on the record at okay. this hearing, and then you can um, say that it will be included as a technical change after the markup. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, the report. Madam Budget Director. I like that. Uh, the, f the first issue is the art grant. We had a, a very extensive hearing on art, Dwayne DeRoyer and some others pointed out that even though the grants are marked East River, 
50% uh, of them were not serving Issue River participants. And my amendment would be require that either the organization is based in East Sea River and serve East Sea River people, or if it's based outside of the East Sea River, that it will serve East Sea River persons. That's the essence of my okay. amendment. Okay. Councilmember Barry, I accept that as a friendly amendment. Thank you. The other one involves revenue bonds. Uh, well, the concept is that if revenue bond is for construction, that the recipient of that bond had to supply to the committee, to the council, a work plan that involves first source for jobs and LSDB requirements of 50%. We did that at Turner Elementary School. It worked fine. We've done it at a number of other schools. That's the essence of it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, okay. Uh, that's everything. I don't, I don't, well, I don't I want to raise it. I mean, I, I want to ask a couple of questions about this one. I'm not okay, clear sure. on what it does. And Councilmember Barry, can you just explain a little bit more what what it is you're trying to do here? Because these folks already have to report uh, to the executive branch, and I think what you're asking is that they report more. And I would hate to add cost uh, to these contracts through that effort. If if we could just get the information that you want directly from the executive branch, then perhaps it would satisfy you. And I'm just wondering if you could. Explain it a little bit more for me. Well, let me explain the concept. We can work out how we how we do it. The concept is if you get ninety, suppose you get fifty million dollars of a bond, and you're going to use forty-eight percent of that from forty-eight million in construction. I want the recipient of that money to give to the city. I, I, I don't. Have, I'm not going to get involved with the council. So a work plan that ensures first source agreements are carried out and that LSDB agreements are carried out. That's, that's in essence what it does. I understand. You know what I was asking, just to, I don't want the duplication, so thank you. I appreciate that. As long as we can go to the executive agency and then yeah. they give it to us, I'm fine with that. No, I, okay. And, and we have two shots at it, Mr. Garasso. When the actual contract for the construction comes over here, we got a chance then to uh, deal with that. that that's that one. Uh, the other <laughs> amendment has to do with capital bonds and uh, other kind of bonds about how you involve minority uh, investment bankers. And I got some language that I want to put together, Jack. Okay. That ensures that in doing this, that minority investment bankers get their fair share of bonds. Okay. That's, that's in essence, that's all of it. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, further comments, questions? Mr. Chairman? Uh, Council Member Grasso. First, I want to thank you for the work you've done on this budget and for the work that your staff has done on this. I have a, what I believe will be a friendly amendment. Uh, we do have it prepared and can circulate. Oh, here one. Um, the, the gist of this goes back to my commitment to increase the level of transparency that the D.C. government has towards the public. And I've been working on it an agency at a time. And in this particular instance, at the hearing, I raised with the CFO that it would be good if his budget was more transparent so that people could better understand what's in it every year. And he agreed with me and agreed to work on that, which I'm very grateful that he has, and I, and I really appreciate that. What this amendment does is recognizes that commitment and asks for a couple of reports, just a point in time reports on how he's progressing on that effort. Um, I, they've, uh, we've worked with this, the agency and, and I believe that they're um, okay with this and I'm hoping that this can be accepted as a friendly amendment. Uh, without objection, I will accept it as a friendly amendment. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a few more issues that I'd like to raise as well. Okay. Um, I have some questions about the report and some proposed Budget Support Act titles. In Part D on page 9, the committee on, uh, outlines some transfers. One is to the T&E Committee, Transportation and Environment Committee for $47,000, and the other being $150,000 to the Committee on Economic Development. I'm curious, how are those transfers uh, with no corresponding reduction in, the C in, in this budget 
or in any of the operating budgets from the agencies covered in this committee, how do they pay for it and where's the money coming from? I know it's not a lot of money, but I'm just curious exactly where in your budget this money comes from to be transferred over to the other committees. Okay. Uh, Council Member Bowser, if I can refer you to page 12, and that's where the chart is. And but it has to be updated, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So my staff tells me that the chart has to be updated to reflect those transfers. Well, maybe we can just go over it verbally. Where, where will it yep. reflect it? It would be, uh, I assume, right here? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, sub subsidies and transfers. It looks like it's, uh, you know, a couple lines down there. I don't know if you see it right there. but There's uh, $222,000. Yes, yes, from, that's it, right. That's FY13. There's zero in FY14 and 15. I don't and know. And that, that has to be updated to have the uh, one, 150 put in it. I'm not sure what. Under tax administration, it's on page 13. Oh, you do have it? It would be reflected. Yeah, Councilman Glasser, the chart just has to be updated, so um, that's where we are on it. Okay, I'm fine with moving forward. I just curious if you could okay. give me that sure. copy of that chart when when it's ready. I'd appreciate it. Uh, just a couple more issues. Um, in the new BSA subtitle two, um, you include the Meridian International Center real property tax abatement, and and I and I want to just point out that at the committee. Uh, markup on this a couple of weeks ago. I raised some concerns and also voted present. Now, I'm just wondering, do we have an updated fiscal impact statement on this particular bill? Uh, sure. Do we, do we have one or not? Uh, and I'm asking because I attended this hearing and recall the conversation we had with the Office of Tax and Revenue regarding why Meridian House's application uh, for property tax exemption of its parking lot was denied. And as I understand it, current district law provides for real property tax exemptions for nonprofit organizations, provided that the activities have a, quote, principal um, impact on the public of the District of Columbia. And, and I think the Office of Tax and Revenue has determined that they do not. And so I'm just wondering, is the CFO's position changed on this? And if it hasn't, then where, you know, kind of what's the plan here? <coughs> Well, the plan is to move, what I'm recommending uh, in the budget is to uh, grant the exception to Meridian, but it's not currently funded. So what I thought I would do is move it to the uh, full committee, full committee of the whole, and a determination could be made at that point in time whether the council wants to fund it or not. And uh, if they do, and to grant the exception for the Meridian. Okay, you know, I raise this concern simply because the truth of the matter is there's uh, only a finite amount of funds uh, and the nonprofits that are actually doing work impacting D.C. residents, in my opinion, should have priority when it comes to these types of tax exemptions. Um, I will track this as we move forward and see. It, it, you know, I just want to state also for the record in conclusion here uh, that I am concerned about the number of unfunded recommendations that are included in the committee report. Not only does it get the organizations associated with these particular sections their hopes up, but their uh, tax abatement, that their tax abatements and credits will be funded. But in my opinion, it's not sound public policy to continue to pass legislation subject to appropriations, especially when we are, in fact, considering an appropriations bill right now. So I hope that as we move forward, we can find the funds for some of these priorities. But I do hope that in the future, we can do this more on the front end uh, and try to track down the money to pay for these things rather than um, put them in as unfunded uh, priorities. So. Well, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Russell. Let, let me just make a comment on that, because um, you, you raise a very important point, and it's a legitimate point. Um, as you know, when the budget comes to the council, all the money is all spent. Um, in doing a thorough analysis of the budget that the mayor has sent to us, if you take the 2014 budget that was passed that we're operating under currently, make no changes to that budget, if you add into it all of the mandated increases that we must do, pay raises, et cetera, you come up with a number which we call the baseline budget. If you then look at all the revenue that's available to be spent, it differs from the baseline budget by $159 million. That is the amount of money the mayor had to play with, and he spent it all, as he should, on his priorities. 
the budget then is in our hands. I have tracked every penny of the $159 million that the mayor spent, and I know where he put it all. And when we get to the Committee of the Whole, I will make sure that, and I'm sure the chairman and everyone will make sure that everyone on the council knows where the $159 million are. And then it's up to the council whether we want to agree with the mayor and have absolutely nothing to spend on anything we want to spend it on, or we take it back from the mayor and spend it on things we want to spend it on. There is no new money, though. There's not the mayor's budget plus a bag of money on the side that we get to spend. And you know that, obviously. I'm being a little uh, more graphic than I should. But the bottom line is there's $159 million in money to be spent that the mayor has already spent on his priorities. I will be making recommendations at the committee of whole to take back most of that money and spend it on the priorities that I think are important and the council members. So uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. If I can uh, just reflect on that for a yeah. second. I, I think that I, I completely understand what you're saying, and I, I think there are two things to keep in mind as we move forward. One is that it's more drastic than you even have pointed out. In fact, the mayor spends money out of the reserve funds uh, um, throughout the year, and then we have the pressure on us to backfill that money in the uh, before the end of the fiscal year. And there is money that he is moving out of the Department of Employment Services in the FY14 supplement to the tune of $16 million simply to pay for his priorities, like replacing every single trash can and recycle can in the District of Columbia. Uh, whether you need it done or not, which is an interesting priority that the mayor had and the council mostly supported. And now the mayor uh, is putting us in a pickle now because we have to fund this or else we don't comply with the law moving forward. That's one issue, and I hope future mayors will be inclined to not uh, use it for situations that are not truly emergencies um, and then put the council in the future in the same pickle that we're in today. Second point I'll note is that um, I, I understand that you are in a situation with uh, not, you know, all the money being spent. And what I've noticed some of our colleagues do is negotiate with each other uh, between the committees or in their own committee to try to reduce where there are priorities that we don't support and then move that money around to make sure that they can get their priorities funded. And I think you've done some of that in this budget, and I think that's to be commended. The fact, though, is I don't know how much this list of unfunded mandates are worth, I'm sure that you have a number, and it probably is close to $159 million. And so my question would just be, how do we make sure that everyone's priorities are met and continue to work together to ensure that uh, the mayor is checked when the mayor spends all the money before it comes down here? So thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to supporting your budget. Thank you very much. Further questions, comments? Yes, sir. Um, um, let's go to Councilmember Bowser and then back to Councilmember Barry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank you and your staff for your work on this budget um, and the Committee on Economic Development, in which your member uh, will accept the referrals you make in the case of um, the EITC education effort um, and push hard for the Deputy Mayor for Economic uh, Development to work on those issues. Um, and secondly, uh, for a new uh, economic development tool. For for emerging corridors, um, which I think uh, will help seed those corridors and um, demonstrate if they will be able to sustain an ongoing business improvement district. Um, so we will work on those issues. I did want to state for the record, and we've had the opportunity um, to discuss um, this as well, um, that the uh, the mayor's proposal creates a new uh, middle in, a new income tax bracket at the forty to sixty thousand dollar level um, and we know that, in, that the tax review commission had a somewhat different uh, reduction for that group of people um, and I actually think that we need to consider a more expanded uh, um, universe. Um, and so we know that people in, uh, that make more than $60,000, uh, but up to $100,000 or $80,000, and I've asked the committee uh, to, to cost out how and uh, what impact it would be to expand that bracket up to, up to $80,000 or $100,000. So when the council comes together again, um, that may be uh, something that, that we can, can fund. We know that uh, there are a lot of people who uh, want to take advantage of the prosperity of Washington, um, and we're, we're doing a lot on all both ends of the spectrum, and we need to do um, more in the middle. So I would look forward to put state that for the record and look forward to that conversation with all the members. 
Okay. Thank you very much, Councilmember Bowser. Councilmember Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in line with what uh, Ms. Carrasso said, Grasso said, we find ourselves in a, in a, in a bind. He was discussing the committee of a whole. The mayor has $52 million of repayment to the contingency fund. We had no say in how much he could take out. We know what happened to Agent Fenton. He just raided the cookie jar forever. And but yet we were expected to fund the repayment. Something is wrong with that picture. So I think we need to work as a committee to see how we can correct that. I believe the council has a responsibility to have oversight of all the monies that are being spent or drawn down. And I support the contingency. I support all these things that the control board did. But it puts us in a bind, David, in the sense that if we say no to the $52 million, uh, it won't happen. Then he can't pay it back. And makes us look like fools if we go forward. So, Mr. Jim, we ought to really look at that. Second thing, in terms of uh, the mayor, the mayor had $139 million of unanticipated revenue in 14, according to the February and March report. What the mayor did was move $104 million of that money into 15 and kept 18 million of that in for the supplemental. Now, I have a problem with how that worked. But in terms of yourself, Mr. Chairman, you know, I support all these initiatives. How much will these initiatives cost us? Just that's a ballpark figure. You got a ballpark figure on it? Um, the, I'm guessing the initiatives are around $150 million. I'll get you an exact number, though. Can we have a quick breakdown? Um, I don't have it right here, Councilmember Barry. I'll just have to get it to you after the meeting. Yeah, I, I trust you on it. Okay. What about the arts money? That's, that's one area I am. You were very concerned about. The $20 million do we... Were you, were you able to put that in that that list of taking to yep. the committee of a whole? Yep. What are the big ticket items? Are we uh, the arts money was uh, going from 16 to 20. The destination DC from 3 million to 10. So that's 7 million dollars. And um, then the tax relief, depending on what you want to do, can be anywhere from zero to 264 million dollars. So there's a whole lot of tax relief that has been proposed by the Tax Review Commission, and we can pick and choose what we want to do, and we can also decide whether we want to do it over a period of, of years, like um, uh, Councilmember uh, Catania and I did with the Tax Parity Act. So there are many ways to do it. But all that information I'll have available to all the uh, members, and then we can just decide what we want to do. Is your recommendation including a 5% cap? On property tax? Uh, there's not, there, on mine, there's nine things on the list, yeah, and that's one of them. Well, I, I certainly oppose that. Yeah, we don't have to do that. You, you, know, I, you know I oppose that. <laughs> but I mean, I just put them all there for all of us to decide. It's a, it's a good effort, Jack, but you know. Effort. Yes, it always gets <laughs> one vote. Mine. We all read very well. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I'll get okay. this from you a little okay. bit later. And uh, I can be very supportive of a lot of those initiatives. In a committee of a whole, we've got to convince the chairman to help us identify additional revenue. Exactly. To uh, get that done. Yep. So uh, that's any other big ticket items? That's it. Yeah. I support your efforts to put more money into destination D.C. Cities around the world spend a lot of money promoting their cities far more than we do. And a measly $3 million doesn't go very far. So I'm glad you were able to put right. $7 million in there to, to, to do that. So if one thing about this committee, we use it in the same way that's about a lot of things. So uh, I'm very uh, satisfied. But let the record show that I'm going to be vigorously opposed to the 5% cap. And I don't, I don't think you really have, 
have highlighted that as, as one of your priorities. It's just one of the things we can do. So thank you. Okay, Council Member Catania. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Evans, and I thank you and your staff for an excellent committee report. Uh, as has been uh, illustrated, there are, are always ways that we can improve and do things differently, but I, I, I know this is a complicated uh, task, Mr. Evans, and I appreciate your long tenure in service uh, to this committee. Uh, I want to particularly thank you and your staff for including additional recommendations in the new Budget Support Act on measures that I authored, and uh, one and one I authored with Council Member McDuffie. Um, Mr. Chairman, it may seem like a small measure, but the tax exemption uh, that we will provide, the tax credit we will provide for uh, disabled veterans for purposes of homestead deduction is very important. Um, you know, we often forget the sacrifices that are made uh, on behalf of our country, and when individuals are disabled to, you know, to a degree of 100 percent, uh, I believe uh, the debt uh, to uh, the the community has been paid, and, and we ought not be asking more of these veterans. And so, Mr. Chairman, I think this is an important message that we're sending, that we value service and that we are grateful for that service and that we as a city will join, hopefully, the ranks of many others in, uh, in reducing the burden on individuals who are disabled as a result of their military service. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Second, I want to thank you for including uh, the low-income housing tax credit, the, the local version uh, that supplements or should work in tandem with the federal low-income housing tax credit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think going forward, these measures can always be further refined. I'm particularly concerned about uh, residents and affordability between zero and 60 percent of area median income. And going forward, it might be possible for us to further narrow the conditions for the use of these uh, low-income housing tax credits. but. I think moving this measure that Mr. McDuffie and I authored is a great down payment on what I hope to be a future plan uh, long overdue as it relates to affordable housing. Um, Mr. Chairman, I want to take a moment also to thank um, Mayor Williams and the individuals who participated um, on the uh, Tax Revision Commission uh, for their considerable service and, and, and uh, engagement on the subject. This was not easy. They threw a wide net, included a lot of different voices. Uh, with competing interests uh, to try to come up with a series of proposals that they believe will advance the city's uh, economic development and quality of life. And I, I, for one, think there's a lot of merit in their recommendations. I appreciate that we can't afford to do all of them at once and that, there are com there, that, that this is something, as you mentioned, with tax parity we introduced over time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what might be interesting, though, for us to consider as a Budget Support Act addendum for conversations next week really is a measured introduction and a measured execution of the Tax Revision Commission recommendations. So we have, and I think these are important signals to send, Mr. Chairman, so the work that you've done and the recommendations that you've put forward for a modest reduction in business franchise tax, which is incredibly important for our competitiveness with Maryland and Virginia, and at the same time providing additional relief uh, for middle-income residents. I think that's exactly the right step. But I think there are other measures that at least I would support. And I think if we want to send signals to the larger community about these are promises we intend to make and keep so that people can um, understand and expect that this is not the end of the, uh, of the journey but the beginning. And so I would look to you as the chairman of this committee to make those recommendations to the full body. Okay. and would uh, be delighted to support you in that because I think we have to continue this effort. Uh, when we look at the prosperity that we have right now, it's easy to think it will last forever, but reversals in fortunes happen in the matter of two decades, as we know well in this city. Uh, Twenty years ago, when uh, predecessor councils, and you were, in, were on that body, Mr. Evans, uh, were contemplating budgets, it was a very different time. Uh, and when governments fall apart, they often and, and they certainly do impact people who depend upon them the most. We have to remain vigilant to make sure that doesn't happen again. And so that means securing our future through smart tax policy. And I look to you for guidance, Mr. Chairman, on how we would do that. Um, again, if any one of us were the chairman of this committee, we might make different recommendations. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means we may have different uh, priorities, but I appreciate your service, Mr. Evans, and that of your staff. Uh, and with that, I, I'd, I'd like to move to close debate. Thank you. Okay. Motion has been made to close debate. It's not in debate at All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. And now we have before us the uh, 
Committee Report and Accompanying Budget Request Act and Support Act recommendations. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. The ayes have it unanimously. And I would like to take this opportunity as well to thank my staff who have worked tirelessly on this. Uh, Ruth Warner and Kevin Stogner, uh, to my left and my right, um, have done just a very, very good job. And I want to thank you both for your uh, participation. I want to thank the committee members who have been terrific over the uh, course of the last year. And I look forward to working with you as we go forward. And with that, the meet yes, Council Member Barry. Let me just say uh, for the record, my deep appreciation to the staff. Uh, Shantae is my principal person working on finance revenue kinds of things. She's working on education, she's working on housing, she's working on everything. And I don't know how she does it all. But when we have nothing but cooperation from the staff, they don't misrepresent you. They, uh, if they don't know the answer, they say, uh, we've not talked with the councilman yet. And I welcome that kind of hearty and, and helpful way of doing it, so I want to commend you uh, for that. It makes my job, your job, easier. Because when it all said and done, I would think that in nine out of ten times, we're on the same page. Yep. So, so thank you. Very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilmember Barry, and also on my staff, Brian McClure and Serena Loy. I want to thank them for their uh, efforts as well. And with that, the meeting's adjourned.